Hi everyone, my name is Martin Hargreaves. I'm, I'm the Director of Research and Postgraduate Courses at London Contemporary Dance School, um, and I've been invited to chair the post discussion. Um, and actually, I got an email this afternoon from Elena Sikorsky saying, could I uh, uh, chair it as a um, friend slash person slash audience member? And I think this kind of composite idea of playing uh, three roles simultaneously uh, echoes something of, of what we've just seen in the film. So I'll try and move between different roles when appropriate. Um, on the, at the end of, of the panel, we have Erin, um, our sign language interpreter. And then, do you want to introduce yourself, Eleanor? I'm Eleanor Bauer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Eleanor Shikorsky. I'm Flora Wellesley Wesley. And I'm Steph McMahon. And we've got about half an hour, so um, what I'll do is I'll start with some questions, um, maybe just to warm us up, and then we'll, um, we'll pass over to you in the audience. Um, we're recording tonight's um, discussion, so um, if you have a question, if you shout it out, and then I'll repeat it so that it goes through the mic, if that's okay. So um, I thought we'd start just by um, talking about the process behind this film, and I know that in the free sheet, if you've, if you've managed to have a look at it, there's a, um, yes, as, as modeled here by Eleanor Bauer, there's a timeline of how this film came to be made. Um, and the very first um, point on that timeline is that Nora commissions Eleanor Bauer. And I thought we'd just take a step back before then and just maybe if you just tell me uh, who Nora is and why Nora commissions. Yeah, we, us three are Nora, and we've been working together since 2015, I think. And um, essentially, the premise of what we do together is that we, as three dancers, invite choreographers to work with us. So attempting to reverse the usual direction of invitation, which is that a choreographer invites dancer, we, as dancers, invite choreographer. And there's, you know, maybe more to say about it, but I guess that's the main kind of <laughs> uh, interesting fact about Nora. Um, yeah. And, and the initial approach to Eleanor wasn't to make a film, necessarily. Not necessarily. No. Although quite early on, we did decide to make a film together. Maybe some joint interest in that. Yeah. And, and what, uh, for the three of you, um, what was the interest in uh, Eleanor's practice that, uh, <laughs> that, that drew you to make that commission? Um, I think we'd seen Eleanor perform live at uh, the place. Big girls do big things. And really enjoyed the humor and vivacity in her as a performer and maker. But we also thought we really wanted to dance together. I think, I think that was a motivation, as well as to make work with someone who was a dancer themselves and thinking about what being a dancer kind of can do. Um, so yeah, I think we were, we were like, yeah, yeah, we'll definitely do some dancing if we were with Eleanor Bauer. And, and Ella Bauer, why, why did you accept the commission? <laughs> I mean, I had just started a PhD in choreography, and so I wasn't, I wasn't organizing projects on my own steam. Uh, anyway, it was a very convenient timing to be invited to work with others because it gave me collaborators uh, in a moment when I didn't have like the time or the grant writing uh, steam or the budget or the conditions to curate <laughs> collaborators. Uh, but also I think I accepted even before I knew if I had the PhD or no, no, I already had a PhD. I would have accepted anyway because I as a dancer and choreographer who always refused to choose between those two things professionally, I really liked this what you named as maybe the most interesting fact of Nora. <laughs> um, this reversal of the usual power dynamic between choreographer and performers. That you choose who you want to work with and you say, hey, come do something with us. <laughs> so I think just in terms of authorship um, and agency, I, I just liked that. I liked that 
attitude. I like that, that premise. Uh, yeah, and then I got to know you guys a, a little more, like stalking you on the internet, and then we met, and I, I was like, yeah, yeah, let's do this, this will be fun. I also appreciated Nora Reels, like the different, I appreciated that you wear different hats in the field, in addition to being dancers who commission or organizers, a relationship to discourse and, and thinking and supporting the field and other artists in a more lateral and inventive way that I think is really important. So yeah, it's just a yes in all the ways. And I, I should disclose that I was part of the examination process for Eleanor's PhD, so I, I know it quite well and I've seen the film. I've been lucky to see the film lots of times. But um, I wonder, and, and I know this is a horrible question, but can you summarize what your PhD was? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so maybe just in the context here, yeah. like, I do love dancing very much. And you're like, well, why did you guys do so much talking in this movie then? Why don't you just dance more? <laughs> That's my fault, editing. I, if, yeah, I still dream of editing a few more dance clips in there, but never mind, that ship has sailed. Um, <laughs> there's more dancing on the cut, chopping wood floor, wood room, chopping floor, cutting floor, yes. floor. There's no floor in Pro Tools. Anyway, <laughs> shut up. So, <clears throat> In my PhD, I was interested in taking the word choreography very literally, two parts, chorea, dancing together, graffia, writing, uh, to again reverse the usual power dynamics or flows between um, language and movement. So in a, you know, a history that, that considers language and writing to be the primary way of legitimating knowledge and thought. Um, I wanted to not be writing, <laughs> writing and convincing everybody in language of how, how smart I am. <laughs> I wanted the dancing's intelligence to take the driver's seat and to be first. So my interest was in how to produce more adequate discourse through and from within the thinking that is native to dancing and part of that Korea is dancing together. So then for me, it was a lot about collective authorship or trans individuality or uh, the social, um, yeah, the social nature of how dance thinks, so to speak, through me and through others and between us. So I, my PhD was a lot about dancing, writing, really literally choreography, dancing, writing. <laughs> a lot of different methods and procedures as it was a practice-based PhD. Uh, for translating uh, the thinking that takes place in dancing together into writing. And that is explained in the translator's note of Nor the Many, our collectively authored, not science fiction, but sensual journalism, because it's not science, and it's not fiction. It's like an actual documentation of the magic and surreal, crazy, psychedelic, amazing world making that happens. So I'm moving too fast. <laughs> <laughs> when we dance together. So in the translator's note, there's like sort of a summary of the, the research holdings and, and background and yeah, and then sort of, of some of the methods. As well as here you have in this beautiful pamphlet that Nora has made, uh, they've offered some of the procedures that we've, we've devised together and also imported from others' practices. All that stuff is heavily footnoted. And also in your little program, you get a QR code so you can have this book digital. And if you want it in paper, go get a printer. I don't know. <laughs> uh, boom. Was that fast enough? Ish. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, too um, long. No, 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 still. no. no. Um, it's a difficult question. Um, you spend, you and spend why, years and years doing research, and then somebody asks you, what did you do? Of course, but yeah. I know, elevator pitch, like that's what you do for five years more than actually, like, actually talking in depth about it. But why film was interesting for me is I was really thinking about, like, why bother translating? Isn't dance good enough? Like, why don't we just get more literate in dancing? What, why do we need to like, mm, translate it at all? For me, it was about also inviting people in, not just only through dancing, but from the outside, like how to think with and through dancing by making translation efforts. So film was always interesting for me as an author, a maker, a choreographer. I was always jealous of film's ability to deal with nonlinear space and time. Because I think in dancing, like my subjective experience of dancing is very nonlinear. Like there's, there's hard cuts between 
subjects and ideas and experiences that can be very small and then very large and then uh, that sort of concatenation of imagery or, or imagination or observation or thoughts or memories or anticipation, that, that feels more filmic, like you can do more to manipulate the linear time in film than when we're all sitting in a theater facing a single direction for a fixed amount of shared time. One, one of the things when we watch the film, um, as well as that, that um, movement between uh, linear storytelling and, and the, the possibilities for editing is also um, character playing. That the, the kind of invention of characters and, and the sometimes full inhabitation of the characters and then particularly with the, when the three of you are talking to camera, the kind of speculation and elaboration and, and maybe uh, undoing of, of characters. Can you talk a bit about how these characters emerged and, and what it was to uh, embody or pull back from the embodiment of those characters? So <clears throat> there are many characters that didn't make it. Um, <laughs> and the three, those, the three are probably they were like in the writing they were the sort of main three. So there's some sort of weird character play that is somehow trails in us, but there's just not enough time or space to go into their back history. They're uh, related to Rupert Murdoch, and you can find out more about it in the book. But um, <laughs> the characters, I mean, it came. Uh, the very first week we started with Eleanor and the research when we were doing various exercises, moving, dancing, writing, and then we followed this um, Kareem Keefley uh, Pelagic School of, right? Yeah. Pelagic. Pelagic. Pelagic, sorry. Pelagic. <laughs> School of writing. Yeah. This, it's also in the pamphlet if you want to know more. But they, um, we were just, we were practicing writing um, sort of uh, the idea of like screenplay. Like what would it be if we merged, you know, some of the moving we were doing and going to writing and back and forth. And through that came all these various characters. I think a few of them, most of them started with names. And then it sort of the, it expanded into... Um, the different worlds that they exist. And I think we had four different stories in a way that, um, that Adam lived in and um, I can't think of it, toward it. Like, well, it was, yeah, completely different universes. And then we sort of pulled it together and, well, Eleanor pulled it together in the major edit for the novel, which was this merge of uh, characters and some of them got left behind. Um, so over the, like, Process. Most of them got like conf conflated into single characters. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, but yeah, a lot of them, a lot of them are still out there waiting to be found. But <laughs> there's uh, a few of them we kind of like. Well, this is interesting for the film, and we kind of, again, if you look in the pamphlet, there's this wild character map, and they lived in different sort of fantasy worlds, or like the real world, or like sort of simplified it in these ways, and. And so then we saw, actually, these characters sort of somehow have a connection, even if they don't day-to-day um, -day see each other. So we just, yeah, dived, dived into them. And how did you uh, approach the translation of... So there's, there's lots of moments of distillation from the scores that generate text, that generate mo uh, movement, to then thinking around filmmaking. I know... Uh, Inevitably, you have to talk about the fact that COVID interrupted <laughs> this process in some way and, and introduced distance. Um, those points where Eleanor couldn't come here from Stockholm to take part, so you took initiative and uh, you did the filming yourself. Uh, what, what, um, what was that process to move from the, um, from the play script into the um, filming process and then give that material back to Eleanor for editing? Well, I was going to just start with it. Started with, okay, Eleanor, we're going to leave you <laughs> to write us the film script, and then a couple months later, she came back with the novel. <laughs> so then <laughs> we were like, okay, well, what are we going <laughs> to? We can't do that. Well, that's clear. Um, and then <laughs> I was <laughs> dealing with like such mistrust that like tomorrow would even come. Yeah. You know, it was like if yeah. I'm writing, I'm writing. Like if this is better be a good piece of writing. And we, so then, teal. Like I don't know what to do, but I can't. Also, I can't be projecting fantasies about this film that we've been trying to make for two years already, and that budget will never exist. You know, it's yeah. just like. 
I'm a work in writing now. And we also wrote a lot. So for like three months, we met once a week. And the even voice, more. like the voice of the writing that yeah. you all did. There was so much voice. It was like, oh, this is literature. Like mm. this is not screenplay writing. Mm. Screenplay writing is brutal. It's like so simple. Sorry, anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's true. Um, and then <laughs> she gave us this novel and then we, we had quite a limited time. Um, in terms of pulling the plan for the filming together. And then it, it turned out that it could only be the three of us in the space in London all at the same time. So we devised a plan pretty last minute um, and just had a go at um, shooting various different approaches in a way. It's why it's kind of quite a mixed uh, bag of shots and scenarios and I think, yeah, that ended up being slightly out of practicality, but also it was quite a nice process of, like, uh, collecting a lot of material in the writing, handing that to you to edit, collecting loads of footage, which was of a shrunken world, than smaller world than the world of the novel, but, you know, hours of footage, and then handing that to you to edit, and actually, that sort of delegation wasn't what we planned, but actually was practical and also became an interesting conversation because then there were moments of like you presenting us with something that we didn't know or us presenting you with footage that you didn't know. Or, and then again, the process of giving the, that final edit to Zena Parkins, who made the music, and then she kind of presented us with that a film with a complete sound score, and we were like, oh, cool. You know, sort of like knowing something intimately and then finding ways to surprise ourselves within that by saying, okay, go and make whatever you would make with this material. I would make something different, possibly. Well, definitely, because it would be weird if we'd made the same thing. Anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, so like knowing something intimately and then being surprised by it was kind of a relief at, at points within a process that was like sometimes heavy and but, long. But super, like super vulnerable actually. Because it was so as vulnerable, vulnerable okay. sort of handing over. I think because it's two weeks of filming and then you just hand over this enormous like work and effort that it took to do. And then to go, here you are. And then, I mean, it, it's funny because we talked about it like the I guess when dancing often you're used to being edited and you kind of make sense of stuff but there's still that exchange but um stuff that you you do and you sort of decisions you make sort of completely interpreted so wildly different and then and then surprise in, in the you know the best ways but it's yeah it was quite a, a strange process to sort of be handed something back and go okay <laughs> And to come to your point, Martin, about, you know, um, building the characters up and also kind of contradicting ourselves. I mean, it's like we'd grown to know an enormous amount about them, but it wasn't comprehensive, you know, what we knew. It also wasn't so comprehensible. It was like, who are these people? That's nonsense. Yeah. She lives in a portal where? <laughs> So we'd been through this really iterative process of like reading our writings out loud when we'd been re remotely working after we'd done the writing and kind of always re-pooling. And then we get into a seven-day shoot where we're like, oh, we spend three days of the ten days we have going, oh, what are we going to do? We don't have time to write a screenplay. <laughs> um, okay, let's reduce. Have and you got an idea? <laughs> A big one was like kind of killing our darlings that kept coming up, and then I was like, But do we have to? <laughs> and then it was like, There was grief, there was grief involved, and then there was play in the improvisation of the shoot. There was no rehearsal, you know, we didn't escape that kind of film ism of like, you know, when they say there's no rehearsal, there's no rehearsal, <laughs> except we had had a lot of preparation thinking about the characters, maybe. So that was my feeling anyway, like kind of this grabbing the bull by the horns, but also having to be with deep doubt at certain points in that process. I mean, that kind of translates, but in a quite a, a beautiful way for an audience, 
because we 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 don't we see you kind of fully uh, performing, but we see you also questioning what it is to perform and present for the for the camera. So there's a real a kind of nuance there that's that's really beautiful. Um, I, I think maybe now it's a good time to open up. Does anybody have any questions? Can we have the lights up a little bit in in the auditorium as well? Yeah. Okay, so, so the, the question was, um, can, can we have an example of something that really surprised you in the, in the passing of material um, between Nora and Eleanor and then back again? I think the biggest surprise was the past with Zena, who'd made the music, because we knew the least about what she would do. And she gave us, like, a full film score. <laughs> Just... <laughs> felt like that um, and it, it it completely changed sort of uh, the thing we'd made like dramatically changed it so I think that was the biggest I can't think what of a, a surprise between us maybe I found reading the novel we read the novel together um, us Nora's um, aloud after Eleanor had written it and I think I was yeah amazed I was really blown away by what Eleanor had brought together of our different characters and it was kind of strange to feel like um, proud <laughs> even though I hadn't done that edit <laughs> I mean, I think what I'm, like, not surprising, but I was surprised how hard it was, like, how bad I felt taking authorship of things. Like, I felt so much, like, respect and responsibility towards the universes that each person was, like, n growing in their minds. Like, I knew that Electric Allen was somebody else than I was making him become, you know? Like, and I knew that... And so in this like responsibility of being like, yeah, but do your thing with it. I was like, ah. like this like fear of diminishing the complexity of someone's dreams is a hard, hardcore. And so I think it's, that's why like I hate the idea of being a choreographer. It's like there's this really weird, crazy, you, what is so interesting for me, I think the surprises came with the, ah, like somehow the very conventional setup like in the sense of, what is it, what does uh, Rudy Lerman's call it in moving together? The sort of soft hierarchy of like, um, whatever. He describes like it's a very conventional thing in like Eurocentric contemporary theater based dance where dancers will improvise and create material based on a few prompts and stuff and like choreographer doesn't know what they want. Like they're, they're waiting for someone to show them what they want and they're like that, that's it, that's it, I want that one. And then the choreographer kind of like grabs at people and edits them and cuts it up. And but the, the dancers are the ones like producing all this material. And of course they have attachments, and of course they have to deal with being like, oh, you just cut off my arm. <laughs> like, you know, the pain of being edited and all of that being in person, being very fragile and intense emotionally. I had this like utopic idea that in film it would be, it would create more agency and like distance between those processes because the dance would be there always, you know, like if the dance keeps, it stays. And yet, I don't know, they're just the, I was constantly surprised by the power roles and the manipulation and like the, 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 ooh, the hard edges of the authorship, the hand of authorship when editing, it's forceful. And it has to be, like you can't like, <laughs> like a cut is a cut and yeah, you could do like a crossfade, but come on, like shit or get off the pot, you know what I mean? Like let's, let's make some art. But so, so there's, there was, yeah, I think there was that surprising, I was constantly surprised by how like confused and ashamed I was of taking responsibility for this thing that I set in motion and you guys being like, yeah, yeah, go, just do a thing, you know? And then also like when you handed over the material, you didn't just hand it over, we spent a week watching a week of footage 
and you being like, but this is what we were thinking about. Because wait, 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 wait. Because, okay, well, it came off different, but oh, God, don't walk. <laughs> you know, like, it's like, oh, so I think there was somehow like a different relationship than a sort of, yeah, I take it and I do what I want with it kind of thing. Even if that was like the invitation, I was like, I can't. And Steph, any, any surprise of you? I was thinking about it. I, I, I can't think of one thing. I mean, I share similar things, but I think it was the, it was the feeling that was wrapped up in this of handing over these, some of these characters, which like you thought you were, but yeah, 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 cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alan does that, like, no, no, he doesn't. You know, he wouldn't do that. So I'm not sure where you got that from. <laughs> and realizing that actually I actually could not let go of stuff like that. <laughs> I really, it's really important to me. I don't care about anyone but this person. And I think, um, yeah, that, that surprised me. It totally um, caught me off guard. But then it was like, actually, it was like these, these growing souls, I guess, that we were all developing. And it was kind of beautiful to <laughs> let, let Alan go. And, uh, and, and see him flourish somewhere else. <laughs> And then actually, the surprise of how we were just like, oh, let's just get some different costumes together. And then we didn't cast each other. It, it just sort of, well, it, it did come through, but the characters found us. <laughs> <laughs> yep, a question down here. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, so, the, so the question is concerning the character Davina and whether or not she, she sometimes operates as parody, but it's, it's very clearly um, a character that articulates something around artistic practice and performance. As she's a, a, a star, a performance artist. Um, yeah, do you want to talk a bit about Davina? Sure, yeah. She, she was another one of my <laughs> babies at the beginning. Um, I'd, I'd like to hear what you guys think, but uh, she, she, there is, there's truth there <laughs> for me in some parts, of, like only very minor, and it's picked out. But of, um, yeah, things I feel like I've been a part of, witnessed, seen, loved, feared, <laughs> um, from my my history of, um, yeah. So she evolved. <laughs> she evolved evolved from that and there was uh, there were some pieces that were made that were first in some early writing that were talked about that she did that sort of spoke about not all of them but some of them um, she does not occupy that much space in the novel no. and she didn't occupy that much space in our process but there was just this like like the minute you wrote the first Davina anything, we were all like, oh, I know a Davina. Like we all like we all she know became a Davina. that like container for that thing you love to hate and hate to love, and you're just like, oh, the dirty pleasure of loving to hate and hate and to love Davina. Ah. And then I get like eight days of footage where it's like 50% you guys sitting talking about Davina. I was like, I guess Davina's a thing. And I didn't even realize how big she was in my edit until like you wrote the description of the piece. And I was like, oh yeah, she's a good 30 minutes out of an hour. Fuck. Like, we, like I think it's really like almost subconscious, like just the, I don't know. It holds in the book, I think, dealing with collective authorship, uh, which is basically like, it's an economic problem. In a world on universal income, like universal basic income, I believe we would all be collaborating much more and we wouldn't have individual genius like as a necessity to like build, accumulate weight around your name so that you can like blah, 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 dominate the fucking world. Never mind, never mind. But I think, I think, uh, uh. so this in the book, like it takes place in a far future after the 21st century, mid 21st century great dissolution, economic crash, blah, blah, blah. There's like, we're, we're projecting into a future where like money's broken and then what? You know, and that, that is sort of the, the pleasures of complexity and multiplicity and polyphony that kind of swirl in, that, in, the, in the writing. 
And then <laughs> when we get to performing, it's so funny that like we just can't get off Davina. Because like once you deal with seeing and being seen or like authorship and making a thing and putting it in the world, maybe that was like the subconscious beast that just like <laughs> reared its ugly head and we just couldn't get off Davina. And so we ended up making a whole film, like mockumentary about Davina. I don't, that's my psychoanalysis. I put us on the black couch. I'm aware we're quite tight with time and we've got one more question. No, no, it's fine. Yep. So, so the question is, is around naming and, and how, where do all the great names come from? I can remember this one, I think. Uh, there was an exercise in the Pelagic School of Writing week. Um, it was like, write down 10, five, 10 names that you would call a pig. <laughs> so I think, was that Elba and Davina all came from pig names? Maybe, no, I'm not sure. But in Corinne oh, Keithley Cyrus's Pelagic School, like a lot, I think all the names were almost there in the beginning. Yeah. She's a lot, like a lot of the, like intense warm ups where you're just like lists of stuff and building characters. Like, yeah, she works with building scenes and characters, like kind of back forming from a very intuitive and dancerly process as a dancer who became a playwright. Thank you. I, I'm aware we probably need to finish, but can I ask one final question? And it's, it's a kind of big question that maybe we can talk about outside. But um, it's thinking that, that there was definitely a shift in, in uh, Eleanor's practice through the, through the PhD, but through this collaboration. I'm interested for Nora what this has done for you. I think we need a spar evaluation week to find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we dream of uh, always decompressing uh, during a spa weekend after we work with anyone. <laughs> but uh, we've never managed to find the budget. <laughs> <laughs> we got Saturday, let's go to the spa. Has to be without the choreographer. Buy some posters. No. Oh yeah. <laughs> we do have no. a merch table outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let us get our spa break. No, but changing of practice. We, I think, with every person we work with, there's massive shifts because we have to work out how to host. And it's always a bit different depending on who you're hosting. And then COVID happened. So I think collectively, we discovered a lot about, like, uh, I mean, goodness, COVID. Yeah, um, communication, like we were meeting more regularly than we, ever did before Zoom was a thing in our lives. We used to struggle to find time together and then suddenly we could meet every week, which was great, but it was also remote, so it was weird. But there was like, we spent huge, like a really long time, little and often together, and that completely changed how we spent time together, I think, which was really cool. I think um, we made a film, which was kind of, uh, new for, 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 I mean, I make films, but <laughs> together we've not made a film before. And we've all got relationships to films. We've all kind of like been connected to making films individually, but it was a, like challenging to like organize a whole shoot and all of that and uh, trying to like do filmmaking whilst also dealing with the kind of scale of you know resources that we're used to which um, you can I think maybe do a lot in dance with just like you and your like say like with us three in the room making dance you can kind of in theory make a whole dance show <laughs> and with film you need cameras and sound and light and it's it's just like inherently more complicated. Can I say one thing you said to me that had affected you at some point? No, oh, okay. <laughs> you were like, you, at some, I don't remember who said it, but you were like, you're treating us way more like a collective than we actually are. Like, don't, because it's like, oh, Nora's a collective. This is great. Like, I'll just be one of four. Like, we just discuss every idea and decision. Like, I don't, you know, like, no. You're like, we hire you to tell us what the fuck to do. Like, <laughs> make a choice, woman. You know, it's like, and so I think actually because of my like the power vacuums I left or my reticence to get it's like ugh, my imposter syndrome because I'm in the middle of a PhD and I think of course I, I can't know anything 
<clears throat> my crumbling authority f forced somehow you guys to discuss a lot more among you what you actually wanted from me and constantly having to articulate what you want from me so that I would be like pushed to do something and not just like, I don't know, you guys want to hang out and make something together? So, yeah. And that was interesting in terms of the hosting. Like I said, like, hosting ne needs parameters and boundaries and instruction and we need to express our desires as much as you need to express your desires as choreographer, you know, like... That was fascinating, I think. Yeah, but we can't talk about our desires with authority unless we've actually discussed them together. So for every one meeting we had with Eleanor at one point, we had another one, just the three of us, to keep it on balance. <laughs> I was always like, what are they saying about me in those meetings? Well, I mean, it worked out. <laughs> We're still yeah. not telepathic. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so uh, we should wrap up wrap up the talk here, but um, I think some of us are going to hang around outside. Um, congratulations on the film. There, there are drinks, right? Yeah, drinks. the bar is open. <laughs> yeah, so congratulations to all of you on, on this film. It's really, I, I've, I've watched it several times, and each time it's slippery. I don't really know what it is I'm watching, and that's the pleasure <laughs> of it. So thank you. It's like cross-sections of the story.